I had to unmute there. Sorry about that. Stefan, how, how are you? Good. I see you. How have you made it look so easy to change teams, to learn an offense, to integrate with a new quarterback? You've made it look easy, and yet every player I've ever talked to who's done it has told me how hard it is. Shit, and me. If I, I, I wish I made it look easy. It's definitely been an everyday uh, struggle, but um, I feel like I give all the credit to the people around me, Josh, Coach Dayball, Coach McDermott, and the people that's put in, put in place for me so I can succeed. Like, I give almost 100% credit to Chad Hall, my receiver coach. He puts a lot of extra time in. Uh, Danny, I tell him, I, I just told him recently, he's probably one of the best coaches, if not the best coach I've ever had, just because uh, as far as like mentally preparing me and mentally getting me ready for the game and make sure I'm in the right space. Not just necessarily just the football aspect, just more so he, he'll check on you, make sure you're all right, because he played the position, he can understand. It can be a lot. But so for me, uh, as far as like making it look easy, I wish, you know, I uh, have my everyday struggles like everybody else, and I'm just trying to get better each and every day. That's one attitude that I'll never leave. And I, I love the people that I'm playing with. I love the guys that I'm around, because we strive for greatness each and every day, even if we fall short. It shows you love it. I have two questions, but they're yes or no. Take your Did time. You did you know the Bills tried to trade for you at the trade deadline last year and the Vikings said no? No, and I, I heard they said no to a lot of people, but okay. I, I didn't know. I didn't know about this one. Okay, and your initial reaction when you were told by whomever you were just traded to the Buffalo Bills was what? Oh, uh, when it first happened, I was just, I was, I was somewhat shocked at first because I didn't think I was going to get traded, but uh, after that, I was, I was, uh, I used what I knew and I was excited. You know, I knew they had a quarterback with I didn't know he was such a goofball, but uh, I knew he had a quarterback with a strong arm, great energy, and they had some receivers that can play ball. Like, like I said, John Brown, I told you, I said that a while ago, one of the most underrated receivers in the league. I kind of showed on Sunday we, we needed him. He, did, he definitely plays a huge part in our offense. And uh, this is as far as, like, everybody in Cole Beasley gets open on a consistent basis. He always says, he always says that I'm open. And if you watch tape, he usually is open. So, you know, that's Thanks, fun. Steph. I'll wave my, on Monday. I'll see you All Monday. Right, guys. Thank okay. you. Appreciate you. Hey, Stefan, it's Sal Capaccio from WGR. I've been on, on all these Zoom calls with you. It's the first time I've asked you a question, so good to finally meet you. I was about you. to say, I don't think I've ever seen you. You're, you're I amazing. know, right? I'm always there. I'm your radio sideline reporter. Normally, I'd see you a lot, but uh, yeah, yeah, just not this year. Nice to see yeah, you. Man. Yeah, you too. Listen, you are so good at contested catches. Take me into the mindset of that when the ball's in the air. What, what's it like? The ball's in the air. It's not a routine catch. You're going to be contesting with somebody. Why are you so good at it? Like, What happens in that moment? I feel like I'm, uh, I wish I, I'm, I'm decent at it. I feel like I try to do the best I can. Um, we got like an old saying, like the ball in the air is yours and stuff like that. I don't really think too much about it. Uh, the more so I think about it is attacking the ball and right. more so depending on where the DB is, leverage, as far as like where I'm at on the field, late hands, being aggressive. Uh, if I had to go after it rather than wait for it, you know, um, it's all gauging where the ball is. Like, against the Raiders, like I saw where the ball is and I felt like it was gonna be a 50-50 ball. And anytime it's a 50-50 ball, I like to be aggressive and try to go try to go get it. Yeah, I mean, high pointing, all that stuff, you know, things you yeah. learn for a long time. But what about, do you have any background in um, baseball or anything like that? You know, judging fly balls, judging where a ball's coming down, anything like that? Uh, I played baseball one year and I felt like I had, I had ADHD heavy then, so I couldn't play too much baseball. But uh, I don't know, man. I just playing football for a little while and I uh, just try to go get the ball. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for asking. I wish I did have some baseball in you. No, that's good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. All right, Stefan, Mark gone from the Buffalo News. Yep, I have baseball is a little slow. I agree with that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in this game, both Patrick Mahomes and uh, Josh Allen are great outside the pocket extending plays. Yeah. Um, how have you had to adjust or what? what is the key for you in uh, – staying live for him when the extended plays. I mean, I realize Minnesota would do a lot of design bootlegs and rollouts yeah. where the plays yeah, play are action. But Josh and Patrick do it, you know, can do it at, on any play. Uh, yeah. Just, how would you just talk about that? Uh, like kind of how you contribute is this. And Minnesota is more so like play action. So we're kind of like playing to kind of like get open down the field. But uh, here I would just say, you know, at any given time the play can break down. And with Josh, you, he has a strong arm. So you can, you're never really out of the play. You never really, you know, you're never really out of the play. You always got to find a crease form or find a place to get open. And a lot of things are designed scramble rules, drills, but the stuff that's off, off, uh, 
or off the book, I guess, and stuff that you don't, you can't plan for. He, he excels at. He can put the ball wherever you need it to be. And uh, even at the times where, you know, you don't know where the DB is, and you just got to trust him that he's going to lead you in the right direction. He hasn't felt this yet. So we just got to continue to trust him and be there for him. Okay. Thank you. Hey, John, what's up, man? Can you hear me okay? Hey, Stefan Marcel, the ESPN. How you doing, man? What's up, big guy? How you doing? Good. I don't really have a joke like the other two I was to about start. to say, you, but, you're uh, slacking today. Yeah, man, like they, they set me up for failure here. It's but uh, just wondering, because it's been nothing but success since you got to Buffalo. Four wins in a row. Obviously, it didn't happen on Tuesday. But yeah. what did you learn about how this locker room and how this team handles a loss after Tuesday night? Um, definitely, definitely one of those. Uh, everybody's accountable first. Accountable. We, we trace back our steps on what we did and what we didn't do. It was definitely a, a different week than what we typically usually had. Um, and we never, nobody in here made any excuse. Everybody came in, was accountable, figured out ways we could have been better, especially individually. Um, I jumped off sides. I dropped two passes. There's little stuff like that that I feel like just personally I can do better and be better for my team. And nobody's ragging on you for that. Everybody's like this, well, you did this, but I also can be better. You know, and I feel like uh, – Combining everybody having that same emotion and that same feeling of getting that taste out of our mouth and, you know, just as far as, like, uh, righting your wrongs. You know and nobody's perfect in this world but God. But uh, in this in this organization, I guess, in the foundation that we built, everybody's accountable. Everybody wants to execute at a high level and everybody wants to do their job. Hey, uh, throughout your career, is that something that you've noticed is in a, like an important trait in the ability to, to bounce back after kind of a humbling loss, that, that accountability? Yeah, because, uh, you know, there's, there's peaks and valleys, especially with the NFL season. You know, when you're winning, they tell you how good you are. When you lose, they tell you how bad you are. So uh, we kind of, like, block out the extra noise and really worry about the stuff that's in-house that we can control and uh, execute. You know, it comes down to executing at a high level. They were plus two in the turnover, turnover margin in the first half. So kind of get put us or in the game. They kind of put us in a spot where as though uh, we got to take the ball away as well. You know, and that's what um, – Coach McDermott was teaching us, and, and for like offense, we got score. You know, uh, it's been it's been drives where we didn't, we weren't as successful, and for uh, whatever reason, whatever it comes down to, for us, we just got to do better for our defense. I got to do better for my quarterback, and you know, so on and so forth. It's a never-ending story of what we could have did, but uh, definitely a lot to learn from, and uh, we get another opportunity this week. Lucky us. No doubt, man. I appreciate you as always. Thank you. Hey, Stefan John Warrell with the Associated Press. What's up, Good, Miguel? Good seeing you. Um, just you left it. I wasn't going to ask a question, but you kind of left it out there. What makes Josh Allen a goofball? A uh, goofball. Uh, you got to spend some time with him. He seems pretty serious on the field. He might smile a little bit, celebrate a little bit, but you got to hang out with him personally. Uh, I can give you all the all the inside scoop. He's already well. He's acknowledged to us. I mean, you're, you're new here, but you know he he considers himself a bit of a nerd. Um, yeah. But but there's a playfulness about him, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely some – I feel like uh, looks are deceiving. He's, what, 6'4", 230 or 220. Hey, Fatty, how, how much you weigh? <laughs> Sorry, he was on the phone call. But uh, – watching 210, he's lying. But uh, he's definitely when – you, when you be around him a little bit, he, it's some kid in there. He, he's a quarterback. He's so serious. He leads us. But he also uh, shows us that he does have a personality. I like – he's not a robot. Good. Thank you, Steph. No doubt. Steph Finesse, Mookie Harkins, Wealth Force Sports Denity. What's up? How you doing, big guy? How you doing? Hanging in there, man. Um, we all know that, um, you know, getting that first sale, it never tastes good. You know what I mean? It never yeah. tastes good. But, you know, with uh, Rocket Man, <laughs> you know, with Rocket Man over there, on that last and final drive, man, that laser he put out there to, to TJ. Yeah. It was angry, but yet accurate. And, and as the game was winding down, um, you know, you got to look in those players' eyes to see, you know, where they at. You know, exactly. What did your teammates – what did you see in your teammates' eyes as the game was winding down? Um, I see that the guys – we never going to give up on a fight. You know, we know when the, the clock says zero, it's over. But probably like our quarterback always, quarterback always gives us a chance. And I feel like um, uh, when it came down in the game, we did everything that we could in that moment. We could have been better in a lot of areas. And we grew, and we're going to grow from it. I feel like you, uh, you learn a lot from losses. You learn from wins, but you learn more from loss, and you see what kind of character guys got. So uh, we're never gonna give up. We're gonna fight till the end, and uh, we got some guys. We got some guys, especially at that quarterback position. I got that 
I'm gonna tip my hat off to you every day. But he grinds, he busts, he busts his tail, and uh, on a game day, he's giving everything he's got.